Hello everybody, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Grimmel, and this is Christopher Draves and my buddy, hey. oh, Matt. Sorry, Matt's not here, folks. He's off studying. Yeah, it's been a while since we did a two-person crew. Yep, uh, so, um... First off, you should probably uh, go check out our good buddies at Hockey Locker. Yep, go check out our good friends at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can, they're Milwaukee's number one stop shop for all your hockey needs. Whew. And by hockey needs, I mean they have everything. Puck sticks, skates, goalie pads, goalie, yard, goalie gloves, helmets, uh, blockers. You can get goaltending nets. You can get, uh, well, referee gear. You can get figure skating skates. You can get your uh, fan jerseys, hoodies, hats, and shirts, and so much more. Just go over there to Hockey Locker, 202 West Side Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and check them out. Or you can visit them at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com, or you can call them at... 414-800-7585. Been a while since I had to do that commercial. I know, right? It's kind of weird not having a third person. <sighs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about this game, man. Wow. Oops. <laughs> we had the Senators taking on the Predators. We have the, the Predators taking on the Hockey Locker, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoops, I made an error. There we go. Hey, you <laughs> fixed it. Good job. Uh, the Predators at home at Bridgestone taking on the Ottawa Senators. Um, this is a big game for them to try and keep that momentum going. Um, so let's find the stats for this game. Well, shots on goal were uh, 35-33 for the Senators, so it was fairly even there. The face-off percentage, that was a big discrepancy. Uh, the Predators had 71% and the Senators had 29%. So they're not good at, at face-offs? Yeah, apparently not. Maybe they should go watch the movie. Yeah, right. Uh, Nashville actually improved their power play tonight. They went for uh, 2 for 3, and uh, Ottawa went 0 for 2. Other than that, penalty minutes, not a big deal. Uh, hits were uh, 17 for the Senators, 6 for the Preds. Uh, block shots, uh, Senators had 19, the Predators had 13. Giveaways were uh, 17 for the Preds and 12 for Senators. It... It was actually a fairly close contested game outside of the whole face-off percentage. I mean, damn, how do you only get a win 29% of the face-offs? Um, the one thing I did want to say before we get into this too much, welcome back, Bobby Ryan. Um, I know that uh, um, I like this a lot about the NHL with their substance abuse policy. Way to go, buddy, for getting you some help. I just hope you can stay clean. Hopefully that wasn't what was affecting your play. All right, so uh, scoring in the first was Thomas Shabbat with his sixth, with an assist from uh, Sabrin, his fourth, and Hainsey, his 11th. Then we have former Admiral Colin Blackwell by former Admiral Matias Ekholm and former Columbus Blue Jacket, Ryan Johansson. Uh, Colin Blackwell's third, uh, Ekholm's 25th, and Johansson's 22nd. Then we have Philip Choplik. His third with an assist by Rudolph Balsers, his second, and Horluk, his fourth. And then from there, it was all Nashville. Um, in the second period, we had Brian Ellis with his seventh on the power play with an assist from uh, Granlin, his twelfth. Then we had uh, Victor Arvidsson with his fourteenth with an assist from Yarncroc, his eighteenth, and Ellis, his twenty-fourth. That was also on the power play. By the way, Ellis scored that... Ellis scored that power play goal with, I think it was like less than five seconds left in the power play. Yeah, and no scoring in the third, a goalie for the Senators. Hang on. No, that's what I'm going to turn to do. Die off. Stop it! Three stars of the game were Victor Arvidsson, UC Saros, and Ryan Ellis. Um... In net for Ottawa is longtime net reminder for them. Uh, Craig Anderson, 30 saves, uh, 33 shots with a, nine, a .909 save percentage. In net for the Predators was UC Saros with 33 saves, uh, 35 shots with a .943 save percentage. Oh, so he referees in both leagues. 
Referee for the, today was Chris Lee and Furman South. Ah. What a tool. <laughs> um, then we have uh, linesman was Ryan Gibbons and Travis Scorlitz. Head coach for Ottawa is DJ Smith. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Scratches for Ottawa were uh, Anthony Duclair and Colin White. Both are injured. Uh, scratches for Nashville were Yannick Weber, Corbinian Holzer, Pekka Rene, and Austin Watson. I knew Holzer would be the uh, new addition to the scratch list. Um, Holzer, uh, they want to get some more practice time with him mm -hmm. before he jumps in. He wants Considering to be... Considering they did just pick him up yesterday. At the build the chemistry, so they're going to give him a couple days to get some stuff together. Pekka is day-to-day -day with an illness. Probably Watson, a bug. Watson took a puck the last game, so they're probably giving him the night off to let that bruise heal. And he got, uh, he got hit in the knee with a puck. Ow. Uh, during one of the penalty like kills. I said, ow. Uh, I didn't say how, I said ow. Because getting I, hit in the knee with a puck don't sound fun. And then Yannick Weber, he's odd man out. Yep. Took so, um... Your plus minus stats for the night are Dan Hamius minus one, Dante Fabro minus one, Ryan Ellis minus one, and Roman Yossi minus one. Uh, the power play stats do not count towards your plus minus. Um, so given that being said, you want to start up our next game up, which will be against the Calgary Flames uh, Wednesday, correct? Or Thursday? Wednesday. So we have a double tomorrow. Whoa. Is that what you're getting at? Oh, uh, no, Thursday. Okay. Uh, well, in the last five games, uh, their left winger, uh, Johnny Goudreau, he has two goals and four assists. Then we have Sean Monaghan, uh, four goals and an assist. And then Elias Lindholm, uh, two goals, two assists. And uh, then their uh, second line uh, left winger, well, left winger, Andrew... Oh, what is that? Man, Mangiapain? Mangiapani. Yeah, he has four goals, three assists. Um, then you got their uh, right winger, Matthew Kachuk, two goals, five assists. So their front two lines are uh, dominating right now because their third line doesn't have anything really to worry about. Uh, as far as their defensive pairings, uh, what is that? Noah Hannafin. He has five assists. Uh, other than that, he's like the only defender doing anything of note. Um, as I pull up the same thing, you're pulling up so that I can kind of take a look and see if there's anything that you may have missed. Well, I'm pretty dumb right there. They don't really have any defenders that worry me, but their front two offensive lines, heesh. They're don't on sleep on right anybody now right now. Five. Go ahead, take a look for yourself. <laughs> I'm working on it. Oh. Yeah, their last five games, I'm not lying. Those two front lines are on fire. Their third and fourth That's... line, they're not doing squat. Oh, correction, Sam Bennett in their fourth line. He's a left winger. He has three goals. But other than that, dude. Better... Okay, Noah Hennison has five assists. Uh, Michael Stone has two assists. And Eric Gustafson who, and Fobart, who were both just traded to the team, We'll round out their third pair. Yeah. Look at that. There's really nothing there's nothing that worries me about this setup. Right, so it depends. It's, it's kind of like playing uh, uh, Russian roulette with their goaltending. If you're playing Redditch, he is 2-0-0 two and, two, oh and oh with a 3.29 goals against average and a .889 save percentage. Um, and then we have Cam Talbot, who is one two one and two with a four point six goals against average and a point eight one eight save percentage. Um, yeah, neither one of them have a shutout. On their injury list, we have uh, Yusuf Valamaki, uh, Mark Giordano, Travis Abinick, and Mark. Yeah. They have Mark Giordano on there twice. Did he get hurt again? I guess. But yeah, uh, there's really nothing about Calgary that really intimidates me. Hey, uh, you should check, uh, see what their record looks like. Um, they are currently... Divisional. Why don't they have the wild card up here? They have on mine.
All right, while I wait for that to load. Ugh. All right, Calgary's currently sitting in uh, fourth place in the Pacific Division. They are on a two-game winning streak, and in their last uh, ten games, they are 6-4-0. Oh. So, yeah, that would probably explain why their front two lines are on fire right now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> Um, Nashville is currently also riding a two-game win streak, so something's going to break. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a even closer contested battle than tonight. Honestly, I think Nashville should have played way better than Ottawa tonight, because Ottawa... Yeah, but if you kill a team like Ottawa, you know, you're kind of just burning up your guys for no reason. Yeah, but wouldn't it be a confidence builder, though? It is. So right now, currently, as it sits, um, as the game finished the Nashville Predators sit in the second place in the wild card position so they're in right now as it sits now I know Arizona is currently still playing Florida it is in the third period and it is one to one but like I said about Arizona Preds got three games in hand so Wow. After tonight, it'll be four. After their you game. You tell me Nashville finally clawed their way into the playoff scene? Yeah. It's a four-way, a three-way tie for the top spot. But and we play Calgary tomorrow, so, wow. We we have an opportunity to uh, tie for the number one wild card spot tomorrow. Tomorrow's a bigger game than I gave it credit for. Yeah, so Nashville, you need to come ready and come hungry. Um, I would not be, or uh, well, I, not tomorrow, but Thursday. Tomorrow, go to practice hungry. And, yeah. Well, either way, uh, their next game against the uh, Flames, it's a bigger game than I gave it credit for. Congrats, Preds, you're currently in. Currently. Now, the one thing I did want to mention beforehand, uh, the league is talking about uh, making a change to the emergency backup procedures. Requiring that one team each have a person there to have, be their emergency backup. So, therefore, uh, say the guy like the Marlies thing doesn't happen. Yeah, basically they want uh, road teams to carry a third string going. But he cannot play for the team. So, he cannot be under contract. Yeah, but it's essentially a third string going. Yeah, so basically you have to Two have... Two goalies and then like an equipment guy that's capable of playing goalie, essentially. Yeah, so you all need to acquire a former goalie to be your equipment manager. <laughs> basically. And your Zamboni guy at home don't count, apparently. Yep. Or would he still count? He would still count as long as they... As long as it's the home team and it can't be the road team Zamboni guy? Yeah. Dude, I'll be a hell of a gig. Be a Zamboni driver and then go on the road with the team too. Too. So that's that's what it's looking like right now. Ever since that thing with the uh, hurricanes and all that happened last week. Yep. Or did it just happen this weekend? I think it just happened Saturday, right? Yes. All right. So their power play unit. Uh, uh back to the flames real quick. Go for it. Um, is on fire. Uh, no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Kachuk, f five assists, two goals. Sean Monahan, four goals, one assist. Johnny Goudreau, four assists, two goals. Elias Ledholm, two goals, two assists. And Eric Gustafson with one assist. Yeah, that is a, that is a hell of a first uh, power play unit. And then we second power play unit book in mind. Andrew Mangiapane, five goals, one assist. Uh, Mikel Backlund. Two, uh, four, goals, four goals, three. three assists. Uh, Milan Lucic, one assist, and No Hannafin, five assists. Yeah, man, this is gonna be a tough game coming up. So stay out of the box and you'll be all right. Yeah, and uh, you gotta work your way through that uh, front two lines. Their offensive uh, front lines are. I would not want to play them right now. They're playing really good hockey. So, with that being said... Yeah, we should be happy. It's a win. And the teams are in. All year, we've been waiting for this moment where they finally break through and get into the playoffs. 
before we get into that, also go check out our friends over there at WASA, Wisconsin Adaptive Hockey, or Wisconsin Adaptive Sports Association. Wisconsin Adaptive Sports Association helps all of uh, the disabled uh, veterans, youth, and adults uh, get back into sports. It's a good, it's their good program. All the money you donate will be going back into helping them keep their lights on and keep these sports going. Um, obviously, um, you know, uh, we like to give back, and that's our chosen uh, Goodwill charity. Yeah, and it's a good charity. It really is, because it helps out the veterans who were uh, unfortunately injured in the line of duty. Yes, so uh, it's uh, one of our many choices. Is that the right term, line of duty, or should I say, have said active combat? Either or works. I'm not trying to offend anybody. That's why I'm just saying. I hope I use well, the right choice a, of words. It's a double-edged sword, but... It is what it okay. is. Okay. Either way, they were unfortunately injured. Yeah. Um, in our case, uh, we also would like you to pay attention to the little area right over here where our lovely friends at the hockey, hockey Locker. 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee's number one one stop shop for all your hockey needs. Uh, one of the proud sponsors of From Milwaukee to Nashville. Yep. I'm Daniel. This is Chris. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Watch our videos. Click the little bell to get notified. And what? You knew I had to throw it in there. We're trying to grow our numbers on YouTube. Yeah, the bell is normally up over here somewhere. Yeah. So. And then I can you keep watching our videos. Support us on Facebook. Let's try to grow our numbers. We have to grow. So, anyway, as I was saying. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Dan. I'm Daniel. This is Chris. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Um, go and uh, check out the Milwaukee Admirals. You can tickets start as low as uh, 15 bucks. It's a winning Wednesday. You can get tickets for you and the family. If they win, you get a ticket for the March 11th game. I do believe, yeah. And that is a 10.30 puck drop. Oh, yeah. It's school day game. Yep. Oof. Okay. Alrighty, so uh, we're from Milwaukee to Nashville. See you tomorrow. See ya.